Hey guys, wanted to show you this uh, dry bar that I like to call the bar cube. This is based on Hans Wegner's um, one. I think it was made in 1956 is when they started producing it. And this is just kind of my own version, my own take, just looking at it. Uh, and so I came up with this uh, version of it. His is the AT34. So you might go check those out if you want to see them online. Uh, they're usually auctioning for like seven, ten, twelve thousand dollars. So obviously wasn't going to buy one for my house, but I always was kind of drawn to building one, even though you know mostly I'm building chairs, but uh, and not doing a lot of dovetails. But here you go. Here I was like, here's a nice dovetail challenge. Let's see, let's see which kind of dovetail skills you got. All the corners are dovetailed. Um, like that and then this was a special challenge as part of it was you know can you cut this lid and side panel and open it up and your in your dovetails still match so i knew that was be a little bit of a challenge let's see if i could do that and i think they, they turned out pretty good and then of course here's this large one uh, that needed to align with the drawer so just kind of planning all that out so that that had that nice continuous line there uh, and of course, there's a few dovetails on the inside. Not not a big deal there. Um, and then of course, you got this side panel, you know, uh, cutting these two components out, matching them well, but yet trying to maintain as much of the grain flow as possible. And so that, that was fun. Um, here's the little recess pull on the side. And if you notice, it's got a radius on the bottom. So doing a, getting the right cutter and, and making sure that came out all clean. And then so, you know, this whole exterior is solid wood, except for the bottom and the top panels. So, uh, you know, I'm not one for doing a lot of uh, veneer work, but, you know, I decided let's do some shops on veneer and then do some uh, vacuum pressing. So I got to try out a nice little inexpensive um, vacuum press that I like quite a bit and that I think uh, most people could easily afford. It was only about 50 bucks. Here is some store-bought plywood, uh, white oak veneer plywood that that was uh, glued to. Uh, I went ahead and went with plywood on the interior. I'm pretty certain that's probably what they did in the factory uh, for the bottom panel. And then uh, I'm not sure what they did on these originals, but I decided to dado these into the back panels, the side panel, and even the front panel. They may have doweled them. They may have, um, you know, only only maybe dadoed it in the bottom and the side and then just glued this and fit the length. I don't know, uh, probably doweled, but I didn't, I used tongue and groove there. Uh, and then the top, kind of the same way that I actually use tongue and groove here on the side. They may have doweled the side ones and then tongue and groove on the front or just a butt joint and glued together. But you know, I decided to use some more traditional joinery on that, whatever the case. Uh, fit and hinges. You know, that's always, it's always a little bit, can be a little bit, little bit tricky. Um, here, I thought this was a neat little thing, you know, uh, kind of a little square pin, I guess you might say, that keeps the top and uh, the lid and body all aligned. And it also kind of makes sure that you can set the height of this, but leave a little gap so that that's a nice straight across there. And then, oh, let's not forget these. This, you always like to, uh, I enjoy doing a little bit of metal work. I'm not crazy about it, doing it all the time, but it's, an, it's a fun little challenge. This one had legs and they were chrome legs. I don't think they did any brass ones on the original versions, but I decided to go with brass. Um, for one thing, it's pretty easy to shape with, you know, uh, typical woodworking tools, it's not a big deal. And you can braze it um, with just some like propane or map gas torch. So this is just some Schedule's 40 three quarter inch pipe, which actually measures on the outside a little bit over one inch, some uh, you know thick brass plate, and then actually a washer there. So I assembled those with the Shaper Origin, but you certainly wouldn't have to. You know, you can, you can drill and braze all this stuff with just your regular uh, shop tools, uh, drill press or hacksaw, those sort of things cut and fit together. Yeah, so fun little challenge, kind of cool. So uh, keep an eye out. I have a 3D model that's been uh, made up for it. So you guys can go see that if you're curious about how I built this, my particular take on it. And you'll see it. You can, you can click on panels, make them disappear so you can see what's behind. You can explode it, make everything expand out. You can see how the parts come together. 
uh, that's pretty neat. And then I got some plans, some shop plans uh, that are coming in the pipeline that you guys can purchase if you wanna make one too. Had a lot of requests and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and follow through on that and put those plans together. So uh, who knows, if there's enough interest, maybe I'll build another one and, and do a little video series or something. Don't hold me to it, but it could be of, could be of interest. So, all right, hope you enjoyed that.